Hi folks, uh, welcome one last time to the battle for the Seven Kingdoms. So we only have one game remaining and actually this one is quite trivial now because the Proud Wing Kings have managed to win the first two games of the final. But uh, still an interesting game to come. And um, yes, uh, so uh, Henry from uh, Team Goldbull is uh, here with us again. Hello. Hi all. Yeah, good to be back. And... Uh, we are going to uh, see the game that uh, you and I played, so the White Book against the Salt, and uh, yes, so Lannister White Book makes some kind of sense, but still it's not a deck you see very often, and I think actually statistically this has been the star deck for your team, right? I think it won uh, five of the six games before the final. Yep, it was all undefeated until um, the semi-finals where I played Super Duck in a game that didn't matter. Again, we'd already 2-0 up in the semi-final. Mm -hmm. That was played for 6am in the morning, my time, um, <laughs> on a Sunday. So, And I still managed to get to 14 power, but lost from there. So I'm not sure if the tiredness had anything to do with it. But yeah, it's performed extremely well for us so far this tournament. I think uh, there's some key cards that have helped do that. There are some cards that maybe shouldn't be in the deck um, that we found out through the course of the tournament, but we can... Do you want to discuss the, the decks? Yes, so um, when we say White Book, usually we have the Terrell uh, deck in mind that goes for all the knights and uh, closes with Turney, has the two white swords uh, to cheat characters in. And actually looking at this, it, at least in terms of uh, plots, uh, it does seem quite similar, but what are the some of the tricks that separate this from the Terrell deck? So there's no Sir Robert Strong. Um, obviously, I think he's a staple in most white book decks. But what we kind of found is this deck isn't really looking to control the void state. Uh, it's kind of looking to overwhelm the void state and win with Renown um, on all these knights and playing uh, Named Aid Tourney as the finisher. And then if you can stand with white book, so it plays quite a few kings and queens in this deck, uh, a couple of boy kings in this, a Tom and a Cersei. And so you just get as many... Uh, Kingsguard characters down, give them a renown, stand them in the military challenge, gain like five renown there, and then gain renown again on the intrigue and the power, and you can gain like six or seven power in a, a turn or two. And it's very, very, very fast deck. It has great strength in the board state, I think, with uh, Sir Bryce and a White Sword Tower. Lots of its characters are getting plus two strength, so it can really overwhelm any other rush deck just through how strong its board state is. Even a crossing deck with its final challenge of everyone getting plus two can struggle to win that final challenge against this. Plus with its ability to stand uh, your characters, it's great for hitting back. So we just found it's a very good deck against other rush decks and it's fast enough to beat uh, control decks. So it even had a victory this tournament against Martel, Knights of the Hollow Hill. Although I'm not quite sure how I won that one. Hmm. Um, White Sword <laughs> Tower was putting in a lot of work stopping their events. But it was... Uh, it was a game that was not favoured, but we, we pulled it out. So we're quite happy. I'm happy with how it performed. It has a few cards that maybe shouldn't be in the deck, now that we look at it. Um, especially some of its events. It should probably run a superior claim, just because of its nature of being a rush deck. My Mind is My Weapon and Sparring in Secret have their places, and I think they'll be showed to probably the best effect they've shown all tournament in this matchup coming up. But in most other games, they were dead cards in hand and would just be cycled with um, gold mines. So there could be some fine tuning here required. Yeah, interesting. Uh, exactly the event. So um, I don't think people really know, unless uh, you know the, the the top players that know every card by by heart, uh, maybe they know that uh, these events. But uh, they are quite obscure Lannister events that are not uh, usually played in decks, and uh, it's difficult uh, when you play a game and uh, you have a kind of a board set that you are used to, it's difficult to, to expect that uh, there will be, for instance, uh, one knight standing another knight, so you have, uh, you're trying to control the, the power icons, kneeling Barristan, but then Jamie stands Barristan, interactions like that, and uh, uh, not, to get around the black cells uh, by having uh, one of the characters participate without kneeling is another thing that uh, works against uh, Bar Assault, and then there is uh, adding characters into a challenge that also you don't need to kneel them for that, so um, it's um, there's a few new things that you have to worry about, 
And uh, I think uh, this deck and the deck we saw in the previous game, in game two, the Alliance uh, Free Companies Dragon deck are really uh, the kind of decks that are perfect for for this kind of tournament that they're difficult to prepare against because people don't have the, the practice, they don't have dozens of games uh, just randomly online against uh, decks like this because uh, they're rarely played and uh, you just... Uh, you don't get into that routine of how to beat them. And I think uh, that's a, a good call for this tournament. And uh, yeah, I think uh, you guys definitely uh, had some interesting decks here and didn't really uh, go for the obvious choices, which I think is um, is good. And it's proved to be a, a good call in the end uh, when you, of course, got to the final. Yeah, I think we kind of wanted to go less meta. I think the most meta deck we had is we did have a mini face guard clansman deck but through the course of the tournament we just dropped that one because i think the opponents were performing best against it because it was the most like well-known deck people quite know quite well how to play against lannister many face guard obviously that's quite common with like a uh, similar to like the stark one the stark uh, banner of the wolf from the lannisters where you just uh harren hall reliant star getting characters in and out of play and it didn't really have a, a path to victory as well as these other decks did so we just, most of the tournament, after a certain point, we just played uh, White Book, Aloof, and Alliance. Interesting. I was scared that uh, you would have Manifest Guard against Ardex because um, both Kohor and uh, even um, Brotherhood want to have those big attachments and uh, Manifest Guard before the Rata is so annoying for that. Uh, with, uh, with Kohor especially, I struggled a lot. We tried a few games how it goes against that and if there is Harren Hall that can put the characters with no attachments in play and then kill it, uh, you have one at the, the top of your deck and give no attachments to Robert and uh, so many attachments go to trash and then it can be repeated every round. So I can never recover from that. Uh, yep, yeah, I, I think that could have worked. And maybe we 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 were just we got into the habit of the, the many face god deck didn't seem to be winning for us. And so sometimes you can just think if a deck's not winning, it's kind of we mm. focused our efforts on these three. But I think I, I do see that that would have been very useful. And, and I think we hadn't been playing it much. So the most of our practice had been after it's errata. Uh, we weren't really yeah. thinking about that it was still it still was legal to use that move. And it makes sense. And we usually um, I played Kohor and um, I think the other two would not be that great matchups uh, with uh, with many face goddess, those rush decks uh, would work better. Yeah, having chosen Filthy and uh, Assault from the Shadows, we had uh, two decks really that... Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, we were hoping that you leave a loop out, but yeah, no such luck. Mm. Mm. And another little combo that this deck tries to pull off is the Boy King White Cloak. If you can get them all the same character, it's a, 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 like an infinite save. Because the white cloak mm -hmm. kneels to save a king, and it's actually it's some very interesting combos you can pull off with Sir Barristan, where he can kneel to save a to save a king or queen, and then stand to save a lord. So it can actually be quite white resistant as well. This deck with its saves. Yeah, that's a combination that has existed for a long time now, and uh, I've seen it used in single games where it looked like really crazy game winning, but uh, for some reason. It hasn't really caught on as a strategy to center your deck around. But yeah, I just... So the testing for us went pretty well. We played a few games and... Uh, okay, it wasn't like 15-0 uh, result-wise, but uh, even though Lannister kept getting their, their 10 power in the late game when all the locations were in play for Bar Assault, we couldn't manage to turn it around. So uh, I was feeling confident. And without the pressure of being this being a decider, uh, I thought, uh, okay, uh, should be able to win this, uh, but um, I had the, in the in the back of my mind, I had this thought that okay, uh, even though testing went well, this is going to be one game where Bariston is in play with uh, White Cloak and uh, the King, and you're just going to play Morgulis, and uh, I'll I'll have uh, Delena that gets killed and stuff like that, and you'll keep all the board, and uh, it will go downhill. Because it's uh, even happened in some previous games that we got the worst game scenario, so that was um, yeah. The a worry. Well, one of our worst case scenarios was Dana with a dupe, 
um, if Delano hits the board with a dupe, it counters the entire um, agenda. There's nothing that can be done about it. And obviously, you also have a Storm's End, which does partially counter the agenda, because quite a few of these King's Guard don't have uh, power icons. I think Sir Mandon Moore and Sir Merrin. So, th the matchup isn't great if Delana hits the board, and we'd practiced that if Delana hit the board without a dupe, it was going to be a Mogulus very soon after that. Just because um, it, there really isn't a way that this deck functions if it can't stand its like power icon military renowns. So we are on the lookout for that. Do we want to talk through your deck now? Uh, sure. Uh, so we've seen this, uh, I think, in seven of the eight rounds. I think we already left Assault out once, right, Sarah? Uh, possibly. Yeah, I think I played it every time. I, I never played any other deck in this tournament, and I, I set, uh, set out round two against the Terrell team. Uh, so uh, I've played, I've been playing Barra Control for many years, and uh, kneeling characters is good when it works. But whenever you're faced with any kind of jumpers that come in in the challenges phase, it's not going to work if you focus your deck on uh, kneeling characters in the marshaling phase. And that's why lately, and Stalek in particular, I made the choice to play this deck because. Uh, with black cells you have a, a little bit more chance to control stuff in in challenges and a little bit, bit more uh, chance to deal with the Voltron decks that I was afraid of from Targaryen in particular. So uh, I've enjoyed this uh, more than the other options recently. And in this particular matchup, so um, as you said, there were some answers. So Storm's End stops part of the stand, Delena stops all of it. And uh, there's an old build bone that can come in from Shadows that needs the faction card uh, that I've used sometimes when characters were already in the challenge and were going to stand and then you have this surprise. Uh, so that's uh, to counter the stand. We have uh, Valor to Harris in my deck that is supposed to stop the quick power gain because uh, the, the costs are still pretty high for... Uh, the Lannister deck, so you can't keep uh, the entire board. And uh, the other thing that we've seen throughout this tournament, of course, Traitor to the Crown. So you put this on uh, any character with the power icon, and then uh, when they attack, you turn it into power to make the challenges fizzle, or you control the power challenge on attack even, and uh, that's where you uh, manage to keep up. And of course, uh, the usual Throne and Chamber scenario is there as well. Yeah, we were, we were. I'd seen you using throughout the tournament, putting traitor into the shadows, and we were pretty afraid of that going in. Uh, but the thing that should be noted is, traitor doesn't remove them from the challenge; it just removes their strength. So our thing was just attack with multiple characters, and if you traitor one of them, the renown will still proc on the ones that were in there without the its strength contributing. It's kind of our only answer to traitor. Yes, and I think we'll see. Yeah, we'll see the, the traitors uh, featured prominently in the game. And uh, I didn't play it uh, brilliantly, I have to say. But uh, yeah, the concentration was uh, kind of already gone at that point. So uh, let's uh, jump into the game, see how it went. So here we are. You can see this from uh, my perspective. And uh, the opening hand with no econ and uh, no prominent characters is uh, not sustainable. And uh, the second one, no econ either, but at least some cards that can be used. And I decided not to overthink it on this occasion since it was a dead game and uh, just play a little bit quicker than I have throughout the tournament. So just mm -hmm. went for the, the four card setup. And uh, Cersei is here. So she is, um, of course, she enables the, the stand on attack, but uh, her ability double uh, entry claim. Actually, I've not enjoyed that in testing whenever I could, could not deal with her. Uh, yeah, there was quite a few cards gone and uh, yeah, not a fan of that at all. Mm -hmm. What's so great about her is what we found a great effect, especially in a rush deck. If you can get Daven to trigger, trigger twice and her, you can hit the opponent's hand for four cards around, which just decimates their hand. So here, like, here's the combo out already. Daven with the Boy King and Cersei. Uh, we're pretty pleased to see this. This is a, like... A really good start. It's the highest resistant because that's my ten cost. 
And I, if if you did the Harris, these two would almost always stay on the board. Yeah, and I went for the late summer feast because of uh, Storm's End. That's uh, the one plot that lets you play it pretty comfortably. And I uh, usually think about uh, Northern Encampment a little bit, but I actually have three traitors in, in hand, so I can play it on every single character. And he commented during the game uh, that he has so many traitors that his Shadow Priestess doesn't work, so... <laughs> Yeah, I briefly considered whether to just um, put the Dragonstone port in through Shadows. That's one way to get uh, uh, past the limited uh, restriction. You can play two limiteds that way, but uh, this didn't seem like it was uh, super necessary. And the other one needs to stay in Shadows if I want a Black Cells trigger, which I do because I need to stop Cersei attacking. There is late summer feast, so I, uh, it wouldn't be too bad losing challenges, but still not super pleasant. But if I can stop her, then uh, simply the military gets turned into power and nothing happens this round to me. <laughs> I think once I saw that all three traitors were in your opening hand, I thought this was going to be a massive uphill battle from this point. The fact that they don't go into the discard pile is no source of annoyance, <laughs> uh, I think, to anyone who fa fa faces the Baratheon faction. Yeah, I thought, um, I I'm saying here, right, that uh, it's one of the best draws I could have got. Uh, but then uh, the game goes for seven rounds, I think, and I don't see single <laughs> Delena or Melisandre, so I don't know. I would have gladly traded one traitor for one of those control cards. Mm -hmm. What I think you'll see is that I don't get a power on my faction till about round six, so. Yeah, so I passed, uh, even though I, I could win an unopposed intrigue uh, with late summer feast, it's not worth it. Yes, so uh, nothing small and insignificant. Uh, Braun is the smallest uh, without renown, but uh, he, of course, provides a save. I wasn't going to give you the cancel if I could help it. It should be noted, so Adam Marbrand, which you saw in that draw, is probably the worst card of the cards shown. Throughout, once we've played the tournament, I, I often found I'd rather not play him onto the board. For five cost, he doesn't have any like renown or anything that hits the opponent's hand. So it's not super strong, um, Sir Adam Marbrand. We like we we found while playing the game and testing it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I was reluctant to give you him. I, I no no I, I, I agree. He looks, he looks pretty. He, yeah, yeah. He he looks good, but he, unfortunately he he's. Okay, so you drew both copies of Sir Emery. Yeah. I always try to put him in shadows immediately uh, so that he doesn't get discarded. Here it actually wasn't that important, turns out, because I had to. But uh, now actually I'm struggling a little bit with um, with my Black Cells trigger, so it, it will have to be uh, Old Bill Bone this round. He's actually valuable in this matchup because the, the faction card nearly is so um, impactful for White Book. So I didn't want to just do it uh, at, at any random moment. I wanted it to hurt a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. A great thing about Goldmine is White Swords obviously can marshal from the discard pile so that you don't you don't mind if you have Kingsguard characters in your discard pile. So you're, you're kind of happy to discard them um, with Goldmine because you can put them back into play. And it's a way of just keeping them, keeping your hand size bigger. Yeah, and this is a slightly different situation than some of the previous games I've had, uh, where there was uh, cards like Last Heart Scouts and Barring Gates where I needed to put my non-characters into shadows. Uh, here it's different, I just have the characters instead. Because uh, honestly, if Morghulis gets played, 
you can't tell obviously from your perspective but uh, the hand is pretty dead then nothing to be to be marshaled from uh, what I have available at the moment yeah so what I was thinking here I don't want to just use uh, old build bone before a challenge I'll try to initiate one see if anything needs that you want to uh, stand on defense problem is there's uh, there's just Bryce right is there any other character that would stand uh, Hedge Knight has the white cloak right mm -hmm. it does In some games, I think about putting the White Cloak on Daven, but I, I was pretty sure you had some Shadow Priestesses, and I just wanted to keep as many characters as possible not able to kneel. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you run many events in this deck other than Seen in the Flames, right? So, yeah. this Judgment isn't that good a card, so I was happy to see that pulled. Yeah, thinking here. So I don't have the free military with uh, Angui because uh, Alistair is loyal and uh, honestly just gives in an arm away. So it's not ideal. And yeah, this needs a quick count. What happens if I turn this into power? Still seven remaining on with the two characters on the right hand side. So cannot properly defend it but lack of claim soak so yeah not the most impactful trigger but Cersei uh, is still there for her to claim and uh, need to stop her anyway and this is always an unpleasant surprise when uh, Daven mm -hmm. triggers. I'm, I don't see him coming, but yeah, gets uh, through so many cards over the course of the game. Yeah, and that also works well with Mand and Murdan. If you don't have enough cards, then you're forced to kill a character. Yeah, and all of my cards will be small that I want to kill anyway for kill effects. So obviously, the Harris is going to be played at some point, and uh, what I usually try to do is delay it as long as possible. Yeah, ideally, I'd want uh, the white swords to be uh, done with, but yeah, you wouldn't uh, reveal it early on, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I was kind of holding it and waiting. I wanted to. So, in practice, because of your maiden, uh, which you normally play for round one, uh, you can choose uh, White Swords to go off first on a Dehyrus play, uh, which is kind of annoying. So uh, we do want to wait uh, until Dehyrus is down, and then you can just put some really high-cost characters, cheat them into play with like a Sabaristan, is kind of the one you want to put into play. Is there a reason you weren't using Acolyte of Flame to look at my top two cards? Uh, just um, since I have Brand the Builder, I was thinking how many challenges can I realistically push through. I, I probably need all the intrigue icons I have here. And uh, the other thing, so Lannister always has the gold mine, so it's really difficult to filter their draw. Yeah, I thought uh, Priestess is going to come in this round and uh, then I have four gold left for Fickle Bannerman to come in with one gold. Yeah. 
I mean, the cards are kind of expendable, but um, not really. And it's an easy win on defense, if I can just, uh, because it's zero strength, if I can just uh, put a character in here, I get the brand builder. And I was looking for uh, either the Iron Throne to stop uh, worrying about dominance so much with my encampments, or Red Keep, which draws other cards. Those are the key. Chamber on, on its own is not that great, especially if you're not going to have any power on the faction card ever. Mm -hmm. got, by, uh, there are no men like, like me works really well against Black Cells in this matchup. Um, because Black Cells doesn't say they can't attack, it just says they don't kneel. And so as long as your character doesn't kneel, which no man like me does, can be very useful. Yeah, just enough to stop any surprises with uh, Fickle Bannerman being able to defend. So, fortunately, I have to concede this one. And his ability will trigger again. Yeah, now there's claim and his ability triggers twice, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you go for Alistair, but doesn't make sense. And also, because your hand is so small already, it's also a great draw as well. It's not just hitting your hand, it's filling my hand up. I'm just checking where all these triggers are coming from. It's, it's slightly <laughs> annoying. Yeah, say goodbye to the chamber. Didn't want to have zero characters in hand. Usually, uh, if I had the red keep and I was able to defend it, it's it's a source of draw, so it can uh, survive pretty well in the long game. But uh, without it, yeah, it's a little bit dodgy. And here I'd need to spend, I think, the fickle bannerman. Decide not to. Yeah, if I'm defending the red keep, then I do everything possible to win all the power challenges. But if not, then it's not so important. And so uh, I need to get past the hedge knight on the power challenge, which should be possible. And uh, I'd also like to win the Intrigue Challenge, that's the other one that seems doable. Military, not really uh, any chance. So should get a, another Brand Builder trigger at least. Try to find that Throne or Red Keep, but uh, yeah, unfortunately. Still nothing. And uh, this <laughs> maybe looks good, but really with white swords is almost a perfect character to have in the discard pile. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure here that you're going to play the Hyrus, just because you're not going to be able to get any of my characters off my board through military challenges. And obviously David and Cersei are both duped up. So given what you'd... you can save three of your characters and I'll have to lose four of mine. I was pretty sure that this was going to be a yeah. And a I, high yeah I think played here. I couldn't do the. Mika really likes to delay the delay the high risk as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do the power challenge here, as you saw, um, because I realized that actually I'm losing dominance if I try, and I had two net uh, northern encampments, which was a disaster. So yeah, Harris, I okay. I'm not hitting the white swords, but at least turny I can reduce the board, so I'm not going to concede the thousand power here. So that's um, I thought okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you have a super economy to just repopulate. Also, I was holding dupes in hand for Bron, and I th maybe Kevin as well, but I know that because you were never going to win a military challenge against me and your wipe was to hire us, I was happy keeping duplicates in my hand rather than putting them on the board. Mm. 
Yeah, don't have the characters to spare for her ability, unfortunately. Not the worst top deck. Mirk also another card that's good from Shadows. Still um, in a slightly weird position where if I play out the characters here and I get more ghoulist, I don't have any uh, anything to fall back on really. So I can put the traitor into shadows or the milk, but I think traitor more likely. With the agenda and Shireen with her ability, with her just uh, paying the shadow, uh, the shadow too, to marshal her, mm -hmm. and I would have uh, enough gold to play one of the characters, either Fickle Bannerman or Shireen and the Traitor, which is probably all I'm going to need against uh, your board this round with uh, five gold. Shouldn't you have just milked one of my two characters there? Um, because it, you're probably going to lose it to either Claim or Davin's ability. I was thinking that as well. That <laughs> it would be tempting to milk uh, Davin because his ability is so annoying. Yeah, I was considering it and uh, I decided that um, I wanted probably to spend the, the four gold, so I was one gold short for the milk. I don't know, maybe Milk was the, the better call, really. Well, is there a chance to defend is the question. So now I get the free military with um, Angui, which turns into power without his uh, kneeling, because there's uh, no more loyal character. And it's going to help me... Uh, recover this situation in terms of uh, the scoreline and uh, now actually the traitor from shadows doesn't look that great because uh, can go on a on a power icon so yeah playing the milk would have been okay And can I do the intrigue? Is the question. Um, Sir Marin Trent is a King's Guard, so he would stand. I can't just do a fake one. Oh, he, he would not stand, stand yeah, because of Storm's End, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was very surprised here when he didn't stand. I think I defend with him. Yeah, I promise I, I knew what Storm's End did in, in the game, but yeah, now I'm forgetting again. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. I think that's one of the most common ones to forget. Okay, so he has uh, renowned this round as well, but uh, not such a big worry. And now I'm thinking anything has to be done before you do challenges. Do I need to use black cells? And I decide not to, so questionable tactics. But there we are. This can be defended at the moment. Mm hmm. And yeah, there's uh, he has renown and the boy king is there, so thought okay, let's just then spend the fickle bannerman for this one. Could even bestow it because I don't need the traitor anymore. I knew, of course, that there is a possibility of actually adding Cersei to the challenge. She doesn't need to kneel, so Black Cers uh, doesn't work against that. And yeah, there it is. 
I mean, it's not the worst thing. You, you're left with four cards. I thought, okay, at least it's gone, but actually you're not left with four cards because uh, you, you get to draw from this as well now, I think. I actually think that's the only time I played that card through the whole tournament, and it worked. <laughs> so yeah, it, it it has nice cases. Yeah. So now it's Murgulis and the two white swords, right? And mm -hmm. uh, what do I have? I have no more the Harris, so I have to control whatever comes in from this point. And uh, yeah, I was thinking. The only way to beat White Swords for initiative is uh, Clash. So that would be a good um, combination of plots. Uh, if I play <laughs> Fist for Crows uh, without the throne, it's a little bit dodgy. And uh, yeah, Trade Route's still an option. But uh, it gives a lot of gold and I don't have that much to play out. And this really was not great. I, I mean... I thought maybe it would be, but zero power on the faction card, and I have clash. Yeah, I need to to let you go first and try to do some challenges, which I'd leave unopposed, I guess, if I want to steal any power back. So you lose some renown from here. Mm -hmm. Ah, and now Eldon can just be played out. There's no more Murkulis. It's not the worst card. It's another way of shutting down, like Cersei's Intrigue plus Davin's Military. You can turn them both to power. Yeah, and I have Imri in Shadows all game. So um, usually if you get into this situation with Clash, uh, it can just win the game in that round, but uh, with no power to steal, it's not going to. Best you can get is three unopposed challenges and dominance. Slightly awkward. Yeah, I was thinking how to how to approach this. If I want to actually use my reducer locations, I just have to marshal him. Then I'm not even doing the agenda. It's a little bit unusual, and he doesn't come as a surprise now. But uh, yeah, I, I do have uh, other stuff that I would need to um, play out for my five gold. So. Fair enough. I, I guess I could have uh, used only one reducer location, been left with four gold, and put the other one into shadows. But doesn't really achieve anything, just keeps you guessing what uh, the rest of the cards in shadows are. Mm -hmm. Jamie here. I put the white cloak on David because Jamie can now give him an intrigue icon, so it's another way of him being able to participate in challenges given that his, um, he has no power icon on him because of Trade to the Crown. So Jamie's actually a good draw here. Yeah, and I knew knew that uh, Barristan was going to come in the last two plots and I really didn't want to put the traitor on Jamie. Don't have an intrigue mm -hmm. icon now to do another unopposed, unfortunately. So standing Storm's End doesn't actually achieve that much. Uh don't think it matters which one I choose here. I'm already stuck at this point, uh, as you can see, because uh, yep. dominance is... Uh, I'm losing it, so I, I have to put the traitor on Jamie, whatever happens. Unless he somehow gets net. 
Yeah, and if you do a challenge now, the dominance is going to be tied anyway. Because you need to pay one gold for traitor, and he has one gold left over as well. Yeah, I mean, it's the same power totals if I just get an unpause, but the, the encampments are really the worst thing. Yeah. But did you need to win dominance? Yes. Uh, it looks like was... there's a lot of Econ, right? But uh, if you imagine I have uh, Feast for Crows next round, that's 6 uh, minus 1 from the agenda, plus 1 for the uh, Rose route, and I get 2 more uh, reduced locations that can only be reduced. Uh, reducing stuff in Martianing doesn't help with Shadows. Uh, it's uh, it's not as as much as you would want, really. Although maybe eight gold worth of stuff, yeah. Maybe I didn't I, need, I was, it, need to win it that much. I was very pleased to see it hit the board. Um, the traitor just means Barristan could come in. Yeah. Now there's only Shireen to counter him, I guess, and uh, our Black says. But uh, he's not going to be the only character that has more stuff to, be, to come. Again, could have yeah, marshal the reducer. Uh, actually, I cannot even marshal the reducer mm -hmm. because uh, then I lose Black Sass. I cannot play uh, Sin in Flames. Somehow there's no lore. I, I had a bunch of them, but uh, all went away for Morgulis. So uh, I had to put the reducer through Shadows if I don't want to use Imri, and I might not because there's no power to steal still. And now it's awkward for Imri. But uh, yeah, with the red keep in testing, we when we tried it, uh, there's one red keep and there's so many triggers. So if it cancels Black Cells, it's not going to cancel Storms and later, it's not going to cancel Shireen. If it cancels Melisandre, it's not going to cancel the location. So really, you would need three red keeps <laughs> to deal with uh, all the control here. And they have them if you have an Archmage's Guild Hall and a Treachery. But yeah, <laughs> it is not on this deck. Yeah, just uh, would need to obviously uh, make you somehow spend the red key before Imri triggered. Like uh, against Stark, it's a similar situation when they have Mira in Shadows, you have to uh, make them blank the lane or whatever before you can uh, try it with Imri. So I stop Bariston from uh, kneeling here. I am stuck no, being that was first. Canceled. That was cancelled for uh, the Red Keep, yeah. So Shireen will now have to deal with him if he kneels. And uh, actually, not that much potential for anything to come in. I don't think there's uh, even any jumper, right, that can come in for four gold or any gold, really. Not quite sure why I defended that. It's considering I had no power on my base. Oh, it's because I had a sparring in secret. That's why. Yeah. So the challenge is going to be. Yeah, no winner or loser because Shirin also does not contribute strength. No red keep to do that trick. Now just quickly looking at dominance. I have so much gold left over that this round I should be safe at least. Yeah, but I failed to uh, control Barista now. Is it worth doing anything else? I have uh, potentially, if I want it, I have uh, Eldon to stand, Black Cells, and Imri can come in and uh, locks him again or tries to lock him for a second time which would succeed then but um, yeah really I would prefer to use Imri uh, in the round that wins me the game now uh, this is another uh, opportunity for me to think because now he's not going to kneel in one and maybe I could uh, try to trigger Imri but yeah it's it's it, Quite wasteful. I get to 13 with dominance. And I uh, have a little brain fart here. I thought, okay, Darwin is going to go in the challenge that uh, 
with his traitor I just turned it into power and don't need to worry about it and somehow I had a brain fart uh, Bariston was attacking on the military of course that I turned into power without kneeling and I completely failed to see he was in the challenge <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean I couldn't stop the challenge but uh, I could have put the Dragonstone the Faithful in there just to to oppose it Two power on the faction mm-hmm. card, but uh, <laughs> ten all together. Definitely should have opposed it. I think I power here with both, right? Puts me up to thirteen. Yeah, and even if he doesn't um, win, if I bring him out. Again, I can bring him out and either use Black Cells or, or use Invisibility, whatever. And um, I win Dominance, which gets me to 12. But then Imri is in play, so you're less I likely to... Yeah, you're less likely to cancel something else. He, he can still trigger before you get to Marshalling, because uh, I knew le- my last plot was Trade Route, so I could... Uh, Always do it in the draw phase. But then you get to remarshal stuff after he's already triggered. And uh, he won't get absolutely everything. Yeah, do I stand the Black Cells or do I stand Storm's End actually? I decided not to use the black cells and st- standing storms and really doesn't do anything at this point, right? I guess it stops the intrigue challenge. That would be unopposed, right? Oh, Cersei's still there, yeah, with her, with her no, challenge. No, Davin. Um, Jamie could put an intrigue ch- icon on Davin. Ah, yes. Yeah, but either way, it can be now um, switch to power with some Wait, did I misplay here? If I power with both Davin and Sir Jamie, oh, sorry, Davin and Barristan, that goes up to what? You'd get to. Two Renown. 13, I think, right? Yeah, but then if I put Jamie's Intrigue icon on. Barristan. When did it, wait? When did I use my faction card that round? Think on defense? No. Oh no, that was part of secret. Well, I think it's still double um, on the military challenge. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, that's a slight bonus for me that um, Osmond comes in and it's going to be part of the Imri Nil here, and he actually cannot be bestowed here in the plot phase, so that's the one character that enables some jumping and actually this draw was not bad but uh, yeah I could have actually triggered him in the plot phase I have a I overlook uh, Davin and his boy king again here it's going to cost me a card with an empty hand wouldn't cost me anything before the draw phase And now you are on 12 and you're about to get to 13 actually, which is uh, a lot more dangerous. You just need uh, to push one challenge through basically. Yeah, I realize now that it's not great. And if I'd done it in marshalling somehow as first player and uh, um, I would only have the Shadow Priestess in hand at that point, I could... Um, that could be a really big misplay, for instance, losing that uh, 
extra card that is going to enable the black cells. But luckily, I get to keep it at least. I can sack all the econ. I have uh, only one card that can be played for the four I have already. You got an extra one from your plot. <laughs> Yeah, just what I don't want to see here is uh, quantity, basically. I don't want to see multiple characters. If if there's one coming in, I can kind of deal with it. But yeah, more than that, it gets tricky. And I put the character into shadows immediately when I could, just panicking about Darwin and his ability. Uh, <laughs> there's somehow he could gain some more power to get rid of another card, because uh, I kept losing track of how he was doing all of that. I'm sitting at 8 power right now on Sir Durban. So I'm, I think I've misplayed here. I should have marshaled, um, ambushed Widow's Whale onto Sir Barristan. Um, that's a misplay. Yeah, Shadow Priestess can get him if, uh, if he has an attachment. But then uh, you still yeah. need to cancel black cells, otherwise he can't attack. And if you do yeah, that, so then you, I can turn it into power and I have Shireen, so there's only one red keep. Can't really get everything. No, but I, th I think if I if I put uh, Ambush uh, with his whale, if I just put it, because I always knew that I, that's what I wanted to do for the Renown. If I'd put with his whale on him, I could have just cancelled the black cells. So you wouldn't have been able to kneel him with Shadow Priestess. Yeah. And then I, I would just wait to defend. You would only be able to attack with Shireen because I'd be able to win any other challenge. Right? Y yes. Uh, yeah. It's actually, fair enough. Well, uh, Shadow Priestess is there, right? With uh, an intrigue icon. But uh, Jamie can give him the intrigue. Yes, that's true. And then I win Dom, right? Interesting. Yeah. No. So, no, it was well played from yourselves. It was well played. Yeah, I thought I had uh, I had enough triggers to stop everything, but yeah. Just uh, passing challenges is, uh, is a good, good call, yeah. Although, I think there would be another round then. Oh yeah, you probably played the Hyrus, right? Yes, I think that was or would, the only would, choice. I had, from, I had Margulis, right? And then Boy King, whoever was left. So this is uh, basically a formality now. And there yep. we are. That was a well-fought game, that one. Yeah, um, went closer than the tests, really. <laughs> I was uh, really on, on the verge of losing here. Um, I had one or two brain parts, to be fair, but uh, didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that was the real best when he gets all this, um, all this stuff on him. I was really the star player here. Because <laughs> uh, in my games, usually Barristan was the one that was uh, doing the most work, but... Uh, yeah, that was really beautifully working. <laughs> Yeah, he's in all the decks, even uh, in the lines. So the, the lines plays um, the Hollow Hill, which was a, an interesting thing we found in, in testing. And Darwin was in play one time and he blocked the Hollow Hill and Sarah got a little bit angry that she couldn't trigger it. But he's just uh, yeah. such a good character that you, you can see why he is everywhere. Yeah. 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 He's just he's a favorite of ours. I, just, I love the discard and draw plus power gain. He's everything you want on a card. And if you can trigger him, if you can somehow get him to trigger twice, it's he's a very, very strong. One is strong, but if you can get it to trigger twice per round, he's exceptionally strong. So no, it was a very well fought game, and fought round actually. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, Sarah, and... I got you off. No, no, sorry. I just wanted to say that Lannister was getting all the best cards in the newer packs, I think. It was Dawen and the army from uh, for Clansmans, and now it's getting Castamir and Marcella, and pretty strong cards, I think, all around. Yeah, from what I've tested with Castamir and Marcello, it's very, very strong. Um, yeah. I just want to say a big thank you for, to those who ran the tournament. Uh, us at Gold Bull had an amazing time playing on it. A big shout out to all those on the Discord who put it all together. And I should also mention uh, my teammate, uh, Rupert, or Mauler, who did a lot of the testing with me. He, he's a lot of the brains behind our team. So we only made it as far as we did with him. So it was a really fun tournament. and We had a great time. Yeah, I played with Rupert on uh, the Tyrell team in the 8th regions and he did really well for us there, so I was um, rooting for him a little bit. And uh, yeah, yourself, um, so if we can show you this now, so if this was a, a normal tournament, if we get rid of these um, pods and just do the overall, you can see that uh, right wing down is on top there with, uh, what is it, 8 wins, so 15 pavilion points for you are the the best player in this tournament, I guess. So, congratulations. No, thank you very much. It was a, a very fun tournament. And we look forward to the World Cup. Um, Muller and I are putting a team together, so we'll be returning with our jank. Wonderful. We'll see how we, we'll see how we do. Uh, we're trying to rope in a couple of our friends as well, who aren't, don't necessarily play a lot. But we're, we're, we're going to put some teams together, and we'll see how we do. Are you two playing in the World Cup? Yes, we have uh, Team Slovenia coming back and actually that's how we started as well uh, with Online Thrones, uh, me and my friends. We joined Miha and um, it was very fun. I think it's also a very fun tournament and you can, um, when you're starting, I think it's nice to have the open deck list. So if your friends are starting, um, I think it's a wonderful tournament to get into the Thrones. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm a real big fan of these open deck lists. Uh... It's a great, it's just, it enables practice more. I do love practicing the matchups and just seeing, because oftentimes games can be so luck of the draw, but it's if you do a lot of different matchups, you can see how roughly the two decks stack up against one another. So I've got to say, I was a big fan of the open deck list format for uh, seven regions or eight regions. Oh no, sorry. Um, <laughs> eight regions was the other one. What was this one called again? <laughs> it's the battle uh, for the Seven Kingdoms, yeah. The battle for the Seven Kingdoms, my apology. <laughs> yeah, both formats are, are fun for me. If you can get weird decks with surprises that no one can possibly see coming, that uh, also can be fun. But yeah, the, the open deck lists, uh, not usually a big fan, but I do have to admit that uh, it gave us uh, some advantage uh, being able to practice. Of course, not everyone has the time or the energy or just the, the willingness to do it, but uh, certainly Sara and I practiced uh, all the matches uh, extensively before we played them. So I think we were pretty well prepared, so can't complain on that front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think... You get frustrated with the open deck list if you get one matchup that it's very hard to win and you're just keep replaying it. I ran into something like that in the World Cup where we were replaying one game that was impossible to win. But other than that, yeah, I think especially when you're still learning um, what the cards are and stuff like that, it's perfect way to start. Mm -hmm. I'll give w one shout out to that. So when we played House Hanover in the top eight, uh, the Alliance versus the Conclave. We practiced that probably eight to ten times, and I think Conclave won all but one of them. And the only reason we won in tournament is Rupert was able to successfully pull Billy Bone out after the standing phase, and so that they couldn't outwit, and so it forced them into an early Dehyrus. So it was a very... Um, that, that had not come up at all in our practice, and uh, that one niche scenario really put them on the course of a victory. So it, they can go different, but it's, as I said, you get, do get a good sense of the matchup. Yes, so um, uh, let that also serve as an invitation, of course, to everyone who's still uh, undecided. Uh, please join us in the World Cup if you can, if uh, your country is not uh, taking part. Maybe uh, 
you can be the person to put that together. I know some teams are still missing and they've been struggling. I, I, I suspect they have players willing to play, but they've been struggling to put the team together. So hopefully we see all the, the usual teams get up to that number 20 plus that we had uh, in pre some of the previous years. That would be uh, great. Uh, yes, and as far as the Battle for the Seven Kingdoms, uh, this is it, so we can see uh, the Proud Wing Kings on top and Gold Bull in uh, second place. Uh, but there will actually be, probably be, one more video. We're going to try to get the team together and have a little chat uh, with uh, James and Hanno as well. If they can make it, we'll see. No promises, but uh, uh, we'll give it our best. Uh, yes, so thank you, Henry, for doing this with us. Uh, great uh, always to have someone from the uh, opposing side to uh, commentate on the games with us. No, thanks for having me. I love watching your videos and seeing other people on there. So, yeah, glad to be here. And uh, to all of our viewers, uh, thank you for joining us and hopefully we'll see you all in future videos as well. Bye-bye.